Hey, good morning, Ankit. Hi, Saurav. Sorry, I was on mute. No problem. How are you doing? I saw um, you in the morning. Y yes, actually, I just wanted to check on uh, renewal. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it will be from April to September because my uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Everyone, okay. for everyone, it is from April to September. So that oh. amount we have to pay only for April to September only. Okay, got it. Got it. So everyone, we have taken only till the month of March, except for, oh, wait, uh, Ankit, mm -hmm. I think you have got a 1,750 rupees uh, that we have taken, uh, you remember, that January e one? Yes. So I will adjust that. Okay. So you transfer 4,500 minus 750. Okay. Just sure. do the maths. I will mm -hmm. inform Dolly. Okay. Got it. Good morning, guests and fellow Toastmasters. A warm welcome to 123rd meeting of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club, Area B1, District 92. We are a young club chartered less than two years back. In these two years, we have been a president's distinguished club twice in a row. Last year, we also were a super club and the club with the highest count of education awards in District 92. Every Toastmaster club has a mission and our mission is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every member has the opportunity to develop communication and leadership skills, which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth. I'm Toastmaster Vijaya, your sergeant at arms for today. I'm sure you are excited about, as excited about this meeting as I am. This meeting is blocked for two hours and you are expected to stay for two hours. Before we start the meeting, I want to highlight some key points. Your video should be on and audio should be off. Audio should be on only when you are called to speak or need to speak. Regarding the topics of sex, religion, and politics, even though Toastmasters International does not put any restrictions on speaking on these topics at the Gabby's Toastmasters Club. However, we request all speakers and role takers to be mindful and responsible and abstain from expressing any controversial views on these sensitive topics. We also urge you to be cognizant of the fact that we as a club practice diversity and inclusion in letter and in spirit. Hence, ensure there are no sexist, racist, or any such undertones which create hostility and discomfort for members or guests. Finally, all Toastmasters attending this meeting are reminded of the Toastmasters pledge that we have all taken when we joined this organization and our commitment to uphold the Toastmaster values of respect, integrity, service, and excellence at all times. Now, let me call upon the presiding officer of the meeting today, DTM Saurav Datta. Having successful stints for more than two decades with HP, Target, JCPenney, and ICBI, Distinguished Toastmaster Saurav Datta is Division Director, Division B, District 92. He is also VP membership of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club. Over to you, Presiding Officer DTM Saurav Datta. Thank you so much. Equity and embracing equity. So what does this word equity stand for? Equity is not about treating everyone equally. Equity is about treating everyone equitably. It's, it's like, you know, you do not give a 10 year old and a 20 year old the same kind of competition field. That's not equitable. You're being equal, but you're not being equitable. One of the things that I take a lot of pride in as the club sponsor of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club as a past officer is building a club that has been truly equitable. A club that has provided a learning opportunity to everyone to the best of their potential and given them a space to grow stronger and stronger. What does that mean? It means that we as a club have always strived to not only help people excel, but also get confident. And these may not necessarily be the same thing because not all of us have the same starting point. Some of us are going from 
one to two, some of us are going from two to three, and some are going from five to 10. And that journey that we are embarking on in Toastmaster is what makes Toastmaster unique because you do not have the same yardstick. You decide your yardstick. You decide where you want to go. Having said that, there are certain values that this club has always stood for. For example, we take pride in being what I would say is a no-nonsense club. A club where no-shows, dropouts are very far and few in between. Today, we have our own take a change because Aparna had a crisis at home and she immediately found a replacement. That is the kind of responsibility that we expect from every member of the Gabbies, and we have been doing that. I remember the same thing happened with Neha. She had a last minute emergency. She had to drop out and she had someone else finding her own replacement. Why? What is the penalty of not doing it? Is she going to lose the membership? Is Aparna going to lose the membership? No. But this sense of accountability, this sense of responsibility, without any consequences of not being responsible, that's maturity. And that is what we take pride in at the cabbies. And I think that is what his embracing equity about is all about. Toastmasters as an organization started in 1924 by Dr. Ralph C. Smedley in the United States as a one small club. And this 99 years journey that we have had is one of the best examples of embracing equity because the, the organization has not only grown in the United States, but across the world. Today, we have got more than 16,000 clubs in around 150 countries and 300,000 members. Gabby's is one such club, a President's Distinguished Club, a super club, a club which takes pride in each and every member and what they bring to the table, their strengths and their opportunities of growth. I welcome to this meeting. We have got a couple of guests today. We have Toastmaster Elias, who I do not consider a guest anymore. She, he has been uh, a part of a lot of the Gabby's meetings. And thank you, Elias, for joining us again. We have uh, our guest, Anish. Uh, Anish, I do not know if you're a Toastmaster or a guest. Are you a Toastmaster, Anish? Uh, I am a Toastmaster. I belong to Electronic City Toastmaster Club, uh, Bangalore. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Four months Four old. Months. Thank you so much, Anish. Thank you for joining Toastmaster Anish. We also have uh, Vinamra. Uh, Vinamra joined us last week. The name is so unique, Vinamra. I remember the name. I guess you joined us last week as well, right, Vinamra? Yes, yes, yes. I joined yeah. last week. Welcome back. Welcome back, Vinamra. I'm so happy to have you back. And we Thank have you. Pavan as well. Uh, Pavan, I guess you have been recommended by Nitesh, right? You have been referred by Nitesh, if I'm not wrong. Okay. So are you also working at Target? Yes, I'm also working at Target. Okay. And which team at Target would that be? I'm in ITA for the log factory. Sorry? ITA. Uh, I'm working for item eco space uh, in the launchpad team. Okay, okay, fantastic. The reason I asked that question is because I had a long stint at Target, spent almost three and a half there as a part of EDABI. Okay, EDABI, yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you, all the guests. And we would, during the course, <clears throat> can get to know more about you and, and, and what brings you here. Now, you would also have an opportunity to share your feedback about the meeting towards the end of this meeting. Sure, thank you. Moving on, let me introduce the person who is going to take charge of the meeting whom I'm going to pass the baton on from now on. And that's someone who's actually wowed me with her steps, the dance steps. The moment I hear the name of the Toastmaster of the day, I remember what a fabulous dancer she is. And she is, I, I, I think she is one of the best examples of embracing equity because I, for one, has been born with two left feet. So dancing and me are at loggerheads. And I did every possible attempt. I did my best to screw up the entire dance performance of the Gabby's during the 100th meeting performance the celebration. But it was the pro dancers like our team out and a couple of others and several others who we have at the Gabby's 
who actually took over and helped me get better and you know at least perform in front of the audience so in a short while i will be handing over to our toastmaster of the day toastmaster shrishti kedia shrishti works with amazon she is a very passionate toastmaster and apart from dancing what i also remember about shrishti as an officer is she is a very very accountable person she is very responsible someone that i can really depend on and we all can look up to when it comes to completing things that she's taken on her plate but before i hand over to shrishti there's one important thing which i forgot to do i forgot to welcome the 44th member of the gabby's toastmasters club which is toastmaster mamta singh mamta is not with us in this meeting right now but i have the pleasure of welcoming the 44th member of the gabby's toastmasters club this program here toastmaster mamta singh with this i would hand over the stage to our toastmaster of the day toastmaster shrishti kedia over to you shrishti thank you toastmaster saurav for the nice introduction and in fact setting the context of equity versus equality that was how i was planning to start because these two terms are so synonymous we tend to use them so often and tend to get confused so i was thinking i'll start with a brief introduction of what is equity what is equality how are they two different but i think you have already done that so the other i would start with the theme dressing so i see many of you wearing green so i had said three colors purple white white and green many of you are on camera i would request others to if possible kindly turn on in your camera because today's theme dressing is very interesting and most of you are following it so you must be wondering why this unique colors like what does purple symbolize why green why white so let me just share some context so purple signifies justice justice and dignity we equity or equality is very much synonymous as toastmaster sora was also mentioning to be inclusive to not hurt someone's feeling to give them equal opportunity according to their caliber so purple is for dignity and justice green symbolizes hope i think green and white are somewhat like along those lines and white represents purity and peace so purple green white now i would ask all of you who ever has chosen a particular color i see toastmaster chaitanya wearing green so green seems to be a people's favorite but if anyone would like to share their motivation behind going with a particular shade was it related to the theme or was it your favorite color today i wore it because it looks good on me <laughs> <laughs> nice so green seems like your favorite color then sort of yeah but did anyone think uh, like related to the theme and chose it accordingly would anyone like to share that Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi, I see you are also wearing green, and you are giving us a fabulous smile. So, what was your motivation behind wearing green today? Green represents good health, also. Interesting. So, and your theme, today's theme is also uh, dressing theme, also green, white, purple. So, I think I thought of wearing green today after so many days. Nice, nice. Toastmaster Vijaya, you are wearing white. Yeah, I like a white color. It symbolizes purity and simplicity. So, just uh, allow that uh, pure and uh, simplicity always in life. And I wore white. Nice. I think I can relate very much to that white. So I remember, uh, like. white is something which i find very synonymous with our prime minister so he used to wear these white kurtas and i used to have this feeling okay white is synonymous with peace and uh hope so yeah yeah and resonate with that anyone else toastmaster kartik toastmaster pawan anyone would you like to share the motivation behind your choice of color today so i would say uh, green represents nature so i am kind of uh, a great uh, uh, nature lover so i wore it today representing nature color awesome 
so i think it's mostly around people were choosing a particular color based on their own personal choice be it nature be it good health or be it just looking good on them but yeah i think that makes sense instead of just going along with the theme we all have that liberty to choose something which looks good on us so moving on with the theme so equity is a concept which is not just a nice to have or a must have thing it is something which we all tend to think about and it is something we should embrace and believe in it so during the course of the meeting we would cover different instances and i would request everyone to think of some instances where you felt you were given an opportunity to practice equity either in your own life or you felt someone feel equitable so i would ask everyone to if uh, share their instances but for now let's let me share uh, the agenda of today's meeting so any toastmasters meeting is broadly divided into three sections one is the prepared speech section then we have a uh, in prepared speech section we have a fabulous line of speakers who present their speech based on their current path and the project they are working on then we have the evaluation section where the evaluators evaluate the project so today we have two evaluations one for the speaker and one for the evaluator and finally we have the most awaited section where we are very equitable and we give everyone the opportunity to speak which is the table topic section and finally we will have the general evaluation by our ge so without further ado let me introduce the general evaluator for today toastmaster chitrakshi Toastmaster Chitrakshi is an image management professional and has nine plus years of experience in PR, sales and marketing, and also works closely with government of India. She is a travel enthusiast who loves driving the old Jeep, strong and confident go-getter, whose aim is to impact at least a million lives in the next ten years. Wow! Uh, Toastmaster Chitrakshi, over to you. thank you tmod uh, i have been trying to take different roles on this uh, on the gabby's in the gabby's meeting and today is one of those roles that i am taking up and i can't do al this alone you sometimes need your mentor sometimes you need your friend sometimes your peers and you have to share responsibility so one of the responsibilities that i'm sharing as a g is with my tagal team and i would like to introduce my tagal team and tell you exactly what they want they are going to do first off i will introduce the timer she is a finance professional working with cardinal health international india a yoga practitioner and a trainer she loves traveling trekking and playing badminton the timer for the day timer neha jain hello everyone good morning so i am going to be the timer for today um there is one prepared speech section for 15 to 20 minutes and the timing for that is going to be at 12 minutes i will be showing the green card at 15 minutes i'm going to be showing the yellow card and at 20th minute i'm going to be showing the red card and for the table topic section as we all know at 1 minute i'll be showing the green card at um, 1 minute 30 seconds it's yellow card and at 2 minutes it's red card yeah thank you over the to evaluate. you evaluate Uh, would you want to time the evaluations also oh yeah and for the evaluation 2 minutes it's the green card 2 and 1/2 minutes it's yellow card and 3 minutes it's the red card thanks for reminding thank you now over to the r counter who is a software engineer in bangalore he always strives to be the best version of himself a fitness freak and crazy about movies and loves music movies we've all seen him as tmod as well so we know he loves movies for sure the r counter kartik thank you general evaluator for that lovely introduction of my so uh, the purpose of the r counter is to note words and sounds that are used as crutch or pause filler by anyone who speaks during the meeting i will listen for overused words including and well but so and you know I will also listen for filler sounds, including a, uh, um, and er. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase such as I, 
I or this means this means at the end of the meeting, I'll report the number of times that each speaker used these expressions. I will give it back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Accounter. Next, we have the grammarian. She has been there throughout every meeting, hiding behind and telling us and coming at just the right time to tell us what we are doing wrong. I've seen her take up the grammarian role multiple times. And this, this person here today is an ex-corporate, an entrepreneur by heart, a risk taker, and a night owl and compassionate capitalist at work. Now, all these words have highly confused me. I would like, and you will know that such words only come from people who are grammarians. Over to you, grammarian Shilpa Reddy. Thank you, Chitrakshi. A oh, very good morning, um, fellow Toastmasters and guests too. So as a grammarian, it is my responsibility to, play, to pay close attention to all speakers listening carefully to their language usage. I'll also take a note of any improper language as well as outstanding words or codes or thoughts or sayings. And as a grammarian, it is my duty to introduce you to the word of the day, which is equanimity, E-Q-U-A-N-I-M-I-T-Y. I'll uh, post that in the chat box also in a while, which means calmness and composure, especially in a difficult situation. I'll repeat that, equanimity, calmness, and composure, especially in a difficult situation. It is a noun. So the example for it is she accepted both the good and bad with equanimity, something like that. And you, I would uh, encourage everyone to use the word of the day while you speak. And I will also give the grammarian's report when called upon towards the end. Thank you. And back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you. Now, moving on to the fourth important member of my team, the listener. Now, he is working as an associate, associate director in IQVIA from Bangalore, a regulatory specialist by profession and pharmacist by education with 13 years of experience. He enjoys swimming and cooking in his leisure time. Listener, Ankit Tyagi. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So uh, we have two ears and one mouth uh, so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. This was said by Epictetus, a Greek philosopher back in 60 AD. Listening is often something we take for granted. It is common that people uh, often hear what is being said, but hearing is a lot different to listening. To listen, we need to make a conscious effort, not just to hear what people are saying, but to take it in, digest and understand. In my today's role as a listener, at the end of the session, I would be checking whether all the guests and Toastmasters were hearing or actually listening during the meeting. Over to you, uh, General Evaluator. Thank you. With my, along with my team, I would be evaluating the entire meeting with equanimity. And I would be telling, if, at the end, I would be telling you all what could have been done better or what I really liked about them meeting. Thank you and over to you TMOD. Thank, thank you Jeev Chitrakshi for that equanimous introduction and setting up the role guidelines so clearly for by yourself and your tag team members. Thank you for that. Now let's move on to the first section which is the prepared speech section. For that before calling upon the speaker, I would like to call the evaluator of evaluator one because our evaluator is also attempting her project. So the evaluator of evaluator one is Toast DTM Saurabh Datta, our presiding officer for today, division director and our presiding officer for today. So I request Toast DTM Saurabh Datta to lay down the project objectives of your evaluator, evaluator one. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the day. Let me quickly pull this out. Yeah. So I am going to evaluate the evaluator of the first speaker. So this is um, just for the benefit of the Toastmasters and guests. So this is a project in uh, the level one of the path with where you first do a speech where you take and you receive an evaluation, then you implement an evaluation, and then you provide an evaluation or a feedback to another speaker. Now, as luck would have it, for our evaluator today, I was the person who provided the evaluation. 
and then I was the person who evaluated her when she implemented the evaluation. And today, though she made every effort to ensure that I'm not the person who will evaluate her again, but as luck would have it, I'm still again her evaluator, evaluating her evaluation of another speaker. So the purpose of this project is for the member to develop skills for delivering and receiving feedback. The purpose of this speech is for the member to deliver constructive feedback on another member's presentation. It is recommended that the member evaluating this project portion of the project be a proven exemplary evaluator. During the completion of the project, the member presented a speech on a topic, received feedback from an evaluator, incorporated that feedback in a second speech. The last portion of this assignment, which the member is doing today, is to serve as an evaluator at a club meeting. The member will deliver an engaging and constructive evaluation of another member's speech. He or she will also demonstrate proper meeting etiquette by being fully engaged during all speeches. The member may choose to take notes during speech he or she is evaluating. Apart from the uh, general feedback uh, that I've been looking at, the general parameters like vocal variety, clarity, etc., I would also see whether the member is engaged, that is, whether she's engaging while others are speaking during the Toastmasters meeting. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toast uh, DTM Saurav, for setting, for stating the role guidelines so clearly. Now, I would request our evaluator one, Toastmaster Paduka. Yeah. Thank so you very much. Uh, but before that, let me introduce Toastmaster Paduka. Toastmaster Paduka is a Toastmaster for more than three years. She volunteered for multiple events such as coronation, LTI, Forte, etc. Toastmaster Paduka was the past president of TCS Matri Bangalore, which achieved distinguished status and won multiple awards, Golden Gavel, Pathkeeper Silver, Renewal Achiever, Renewal Rock Stars, Talk of the TM, Beat the Clock, etc. Over to you, Toastmaster Paduka. Please state the project objectives of your target speaker. Thank you very much. So today's target, my target speaker, Toastmaster Syed, is attempting his level four speech two, that is question and answer section, from the path uh, presentation mastery. So the purpose of a speech is for the member to learn about learn about practice facilitating a question and answer session. So the purpose of the speech for the member to practice delivering an informative speech and running a well organized question and answer session. And the member is responsible for managing time so that adequate opportunity for both. So time of please note the timing is from 15 to 20 minutes and Yes, so I think in today's uh, session, I mean, this particular thing is going to be a bit interesting. Like it is not like unlike another ordinary one. So all the best to Toastmaster side. Thank you, Toastmaster Paduka. Now coming to our speaker one, Toastmaster Sayyid is an engineer and management professional in automotive industry. He is a Toastmaster from the last two years, a passionate learner who likes reading, traveling, gymming and sports. Toastmaster Sayyid, if the door of opportunity is closed, knock a window. If the door of opportunity is closed, knock a window. Toastmaster Sayyid. Thank you. Now, imagine a boy who runs out of his home just because his father is not allowing him to do what he wants. And I did it three times. Good morning, the Gabby's Toastmasters and dear guests. My father, close to six feet tall, 110 kg stout, loin like a face, big eyes. Anybody before talking to him will think twice if it is the first time. And I, in my school days, was like a matchstick with the head on the top. But I was very good at studies. I used to always stand first in the class in primary school and in high school. Now, this particular incident happened when I was in grade nine. The annual function day was approaching and one of my teacher who is also 
a writer and director wanted to set up a two hours play for the annual function day. And he asked me, would you like to act? I said, yes. I said, but what is the role? He said, it's a villain. Maybe he thought this matchstick is not suitable to be a hero. But I am a guy, I want to do anything and everything. At least give a try. I said, yes, let's do it. Let's do it without understanding that the rehearsal time is night eight to 11. And in my home, I'm supposed to be back at 9 p.m. No deviation, no excuses. I tried to figure out what I should be doing. And then I told my family, I need to catch up my studies. So next three weeks, evening, nobody will disturb me. So on one side, 7.30 PM, I'll close the door of my room. 7.31 PM, there is a small window on the other side. I'll jump out of it and disappear for years. First week was very good. Everything was fine, but then eighth day, my father sensed something is not right. How this guy can be so sincere? Eight o'clock, he knocked the door. One and two and three, I was not there. Midnight, when I come back, I slowly opened the window and I saw my father lying on the bed awake. Now, I don't know what to do, whether I should get in, run away. Then he looked at me and he said, I have to come in. Where, do you, where did you go? I thought I should lie. I should tell him that I went for a group studies or I had a project to complete, then I went there. But I thought it will become messy because I already lied once. I said, drama practice. What? Drama practice? You are saying in the exam time, you are doing drama? Stop this nonsense, nothing from tomorrow. He banged the door and he left. That whole night, I could not sleep. I cannot disobey my father. At the same time, I don't want to give drama, give up on drama. Dawn 5.30, again the same window. I jumped out of it, walked four kilometers, went to my cousin's house. I was there two days and I was continuing my rehearsal. Third day morning when I wake up, I saw my father. Will you go home? I followed him, went home. But that day, I got his unsaid permission to continue the drama. Two days went, two weeks went, and everything was going fine. The complete two hours play was by heart for me. And I was like a teleprompter to others. If somebody is not able to remember without looking at the script, I will tell them, this is what you need to do. One week before the play, our hero gave up. He said, I am not able to remember everything. And I cannot do it. The natural choice was obviously me. The teacher said, can you do it? I said, let's swap the roles. I'm OK. Let's do it. And we did it on 
the D day of this play, these two hours were power packed of emotion, excitement, struggle, and success. Every emotion, it was a pin drop silence. Every excitement, there were applause. And every struggle, the audience wanted the hero to win and succeed. Among this close to 1,000 audience, my father was there. At the end of the final curtain, the clappings were not stopping. My father reached backstage and opposite to his nature, I saw a lot of emotions on his face, which he was trying to hide. He tapped on my chip and left out without saying anything. That night, I was in a equanimous stage. I could sleep peacefully. That particular incident gave me a lot of courage and also a lesson to say, if you try to lie, you have to lie multiple times. But if you confront and face the truth, it will give you a solution. I think in our life also, we face these situations multiple times. On one side, we have our relations, we have the people whom we love, respect, admire. On other side, we have our own ambitions, goals, and things we want to accomplish or achieve. And sometimes there is a roadblock. Sometimes the doors are closed. But in all these closed doors, I think there is still a hope of window which can find the right balance between the two, which we can strike. And here, it is not our words, it is not our actions, but our results, which should be speaking and giving them what we were doing or saying was right. There are almost 80% of the people who don't know or who don't write their goals. There are 92% people who have the goals but will give up with the small struggles. And there are 1% people with, without or despite of all the struggles, all the roadblocks, all the issues, they will be persistent. They will keep chasing their dreams and they will achieve it. I think that's the lesson that I got from here. So I would like to stop here and let us take maybe two to three questions if there are any. Anybody? Then I'll call upon a name or I will request Toastmaster of the day to call upon the names. I think we should call upon names then, Toastmaster Sayyid. Yes, please. Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi, uh, do you have any question? So, uh, I, I you were taking notes. Can I um, ask one question, Sayyid? Yes, sure. please. So, um, Sayyid, my question is, now when you look back, like years back, right? So, when you, skip, when you, when you jumped out of the window, you obviously uh, had to invest some time in Kuwait drama, right? And uh, what you're doing currently has nothing to do with the drama, you know, that, that <laughs> right? So, there was an X amount of time you spent on that. Mm -hmm. Do you regret doing that? Because that time you could have invested in probably being a better version of 
yourself in whatever you're doing in your life right now. So for example, you're an engineer, right? So maybe those hours you would have spent more on calculus that would have probably made you a better engineer. So do you regret or how do you look at it looking back? That's question number one. And the question number two is, you have a son, you have a daughter or you have both a both. son and both? I have both. Okay. So imagine now your son doing the same. He jumping out of the window and you walking in at 8 p.m. or 5 a.m. and finding that the room is empty and he's not there. And he comes back and tells you that I went for dancing or I went for something else. It doesn't always have to be drama because if it's drama, I know that you'll be okay. But I'm saying if it's something else, like for example, he's gone out partying, then what? How would you react? Great. I think it was a great question and it was expected also as a parent, as a parent, what you will do. So let me go uh, step by step. Number one is it is not about drama. Drama was more of my hobby than a passion for career. Okay. And I did it quite a number of times. And I think what I did was well, uh, for sure. And it was not about drama. It was not about career. It was about breaking that tradition and bringing that freedom or equality that was my aim that time and i think i did it and i did not do it one time i did it multiple times because i come from a traditional uh, business family where the maximum education was like uh, good enough to do the business and not something like uh, what i have done i have done diploma in engineering i did b in engineering I did double post graduation, MTech, MBA. I am alumni of I am Ahmedabad, and I did two big courses there, including senior leadership program. So I think it was not about you know uh, drama. It was about uh, breaking the rules and doing whatever you feel is right. So that was my answer one. Answer two will be, I always have that regret that. I lied and I also thought that I disobeyed as a, as a kid or as a son. But when I come back and when I see the, the action or uh, not the action, but the emotion or the feeling of my father that time, he himself realized that what I did was right. And as a father, I am keeping, keeping that open space to my kid to come and tell me that I want to do this or I don't like this. Uh, I'll give you one example. My daughter was in, uh, in, in her 11th. I was telling her, why don't you go for mathematics? She said, I don't want to do it. And then after a couple of times insisting her, I said, do whatever you want to do. But then excel in what you want to do. And that's how I did it. I hope I answered your question. Does it answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We can uh, take one more because it is already 15 minutes now. Yeah, we have Toastmaster Ankit and Toastmaster Shilpa. Uh, Toastmaster Ankit, would you like to post your question? Sorry, my question is, is persistence uh, uh, more important than talent? Uh, because I will just give my example, like when I was uh, preparing for medical exams. So I was quite persistent in my studies, <laughs> but I could not succeed. And I took another uh, uh, paramedical course. So sometimes I feel like uh, uh, talent is more important than persistence. Uh, so I just want to understand what's your take on this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is very interesting <laughs> question. But you know, uh, I don't believe on talent, I'll tell you. And I'll tell you why. The talent comes from the persistence, pers persistence, wow. I'll say. And uh, as a rule, I mean, there is, there is a study behind it which says, for any subject for you to know, it takes about 300 hours. And to get into an expertise of that particular subject and let it be anything, whether it is 
education or sports or whatever you want to do it takes something between 3000 to 10000 hours to reach perfection in that so that is why i'll come back to what i said there is nothing called talent it is all persistent and with every effort you get better for example you know in 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 my case if you go back and then see my uh, icebreaker speech and today's speech and the speeches that i'm going to give further later i, I think you'll find a big difference does it make sense for you yes toastmaster thank you Thank One you. more, we still have three minutes. Yeah, we have still have time. Yeah. Toastmaster Shilpa, would you like to share your question? Yes, thank you. Um, thank God, Sahir, you didn't break your legs when you jumped out of that window. <laughs> thank God you're standing and giving the speech today. Uh, but what motivated you to break the rules? Is it someone or something in specific? And, and why did you think that you didn't have the freedom just because you were from a traditional family? That's my question. Why? Okay. From a traditional family is no, uh, I would say, a blocking point. But limiting yourself to what uh, traditionally family is doing, that is what I want it to be slightly different and not slightly in a way different, okay? So I, I come from traditional family, but I have, I will say, scholarship in Marathi language, for example. I was stopper of Marathi. So I wanted to always explore something new. I wanted to do something different than what is happening traditionally in my family. And that is why I try to break everything. I mean, when I went to Mumbai first time when I was around seven years old, I went alone. I mean, of course, with the family's permission, but I went alone and I went and I come back also. I went to sell a truck of fruits to Delhi when I was 13 years old. And I, I like exploring. I like adventures. That's why. And even now also, I am VPPR and I don't know what to do as a VPPR, but I'm still trying to learn. Is that okay? Right then, thank you very much. I think we are almost close to 20 minutes, so we should stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Sayed, for that engaging session and, um, and an amazing question answer session. So with that, let's move on to the evaluators. Let me now call upon stage Toastmaster Paduka for providing her evaluation for Toastmaster Sayed's speech. Uh, doesn't evaluation happen during the GE section? Uh, uh, no, Toastmaster Paduka. So we have modified our structure. Like we have the prepared speech, then the evaluations, then the table topics, and finally we have the GE section g evaluation that happens in the end but the speech evaluations are after the speech. Uh, one second paduka are you ready with your evaluation or you need some time to write it um uh, i i need a little bit of time so okay. can, can i, I do think, it after uh, we can do yeah then we can do the tt and then we can do the evaluation shrishti right okay sure so before moving on to the table topic section let me come back to my previous question of would anyone like to share instances of equity in their workplace or in their surroundings and something which has motivated them to take a small step in this direction? Would anyone like to share their personal experience? Or what does equity mean for you? No one does. Is equity a distant topic for everyone here? Is it like a vague concept? Hey, I have a point I could tell you about uh, Timur. Awesome. Sure, Toastmaster. So, so that, so, glad to have you here after many weeks. Right. So there's a lot of talk about pay disparity and all. 
uh, that there's a gender wage gap which people speak about, right? right. Now, and I was uh, hoping we, someone brings that up. Thanks for bringing it up. So, uh, see, there are some systemic uh, problems which are ingrained, but at least at the cutting edge of uh, corporate today, there. I, I see I'm privy to other people's salaries, so here there are people who open up. So I know that if we, we all get at the same scale based on experience, there is equity there. And, and I was thinking of something a little more on a lighter note, how work-life balance seems to have been compromised with work-life integration. In some way, we're always on call. Working in AM, mm. PM, I'm, I'm saying more than 12 hours productive for a couple of weeks. The ladies in my team also are dealing with that only. Poor, poor ones. I, I message them at 1 a.m., they'll also respond. And, they, and then you get on call at that time. So, equity. Yeah. But but back to what you wanted someone to bring that, that point up, right? Is what are, you, what are your facts and figures on that? So, definitely, like, pay equity is a hotly debated topic in every workplace. And yes, it exists, like we know there are differences, but what makes it even worse is like this culture where employees are discouraged to discuss their salaries openly or in public. Although within Amazon, at least we know we have these Slack channels where people post their salaries anonymously. But this discourage, like this culture where people are discouraged to share their salaries, it is creating a more difficult scenario for everyone where we are always questioning okay am i getting the pay which i deserve or am i getting paid equally as uh, as my colleagues as people who are on my same level who have the same skill sets so that like i think uh, for me if we are more open about it or i was reading this article where someone suggested that we can at least give some rough estimates or have some open public figures so that people know okay, how are they getting paid and uh, where do they stand as compared to others. Although it's not very ideal, but I think it is at least a good step to create a more equitable environment to remove that fear from everyone's or that doubt from everyone's mind so that they know okay, they are getting paid right and they are getting paid according to what they deserve. That is my take on it. Very thought provoking. Yeah. Toastmaster Chitrakshi, I uh, saw you were also raising a hand. Did you want to add something to this or like you had some other take? Would you like to share that? Uh, no, no, it just happened my mistake. Sorry, please continue. Okay, but as we are on the topic, would you like to share any instance of equity in workplace or in your environment? Or what does equity mean for you? I can just say that um, from a very young age, I remember knowing that my I have a younger brother. So I remember knowing that oh, everyone in my family, my grandparents, especially my grandfather, paternal grandfather, preferred having my brother around more than me. So I could see that. Uh, but fortunately for me, I never saw that with my parents. Not once do I remember thinking, oh, my brother's very studious and I'm the rebellious one. I'm the one who, who's always out of the house at 12 in the night. And my parents never said, oh, my son does this or my daughter does this. And I never compared my, my brother to me. Never said, oh, but he gets better marks. Why don't you? Or that I am able to do all the projects. Why can't he? So they've always, I've had equity at home because of which I've always gone out and been able to uh, maintain that outside as well. So it, as far as I'm concerned, I've been lucky enough to be born in a household life, as such. Right. So for you, equity is more along the lines of gender, uh, sorry, gender equity. And I also resonate with that fact that our surroundings or our environment, what we see and perceive in our homes, it creates a big impression on how on how we view these topics and conduct ourselves in our environment and our workplace. So glad that you had a very good experience and it is shaping your future. Good one. Uh, Toastmaster Akib and Toastmaster Pawan are also raising our hand. What I'll do is I'll take one take now and then we can have... Toastmaster Pawan sharing his point of view after the TT section. Hope that's okay, Toastmaster Pawan. Sure. Yeah, Toastmaster Ake, what, what would yeah. you like to add? Yeah. Thanks, Srishti. So I've always had this equity versus equality thought <clears throat> being there and not about gender equality or gender equity, but having that fairness is something which I've always 
thought about uh and like sharing the ctc part like even people feel ashamed that it's not good to share why because it's very low and you want to save your image as well but when i was working with my previous organization and uh we had few contract people working they were all paid equally so there was equality amongst all of them but they were not paid fairly if you look at the uh, company group perspective so we had that logic saying the minimum wage to be paid for skilled labor semi skilled labor is something which is guided by governance parameters so for telangana it's different which is little higher than andhra pradesh and these folks were there working in the same range for very long time so we thought that fairness is something which is very important rather than giving equal wages to all of them so discussion started and we worked kind of to bring something fair tailor suited to the needs what is there and we try to bring a better solution for all of those issues which they had regarding wages so i believe that rather than focusing on equality or gender part trying to be fair trying to tailor suit and meet the demands like despite other gender having less salary if their needs are made and they feel comfortable like girls taking two hours less work and manager knowing that it is the time night time which is which is not best suited for them and if both of them are agreeable doing fairly then it's good i don't see any challenge there because for guys like for me i get up and work in night hours and i don't find it difficult so manager is like okay let us do it in night but if it is for girls it's good that we close by 6 or 7 pm and if manager is understanding in that manner and being fair to both of us we are both feeling that it is it is equity in play so that's my thought yeah yeah absolutely toastmaster akib even i also agree with the fact that it's not about equality it's more about equity we getting paid and i think it's not even about gender like if a female employee is ready to put in the extra effort extra work hours she should be paid accordingly so it's more about equitable pay where we are paid according to our caliber according to our effort and according to our talents so thanks for sharing that toastmaster akib now let's move on to the table topic section and for that let me call upon the stage our table topics master for today toastmaster shri lakshmi who is a certified image consultant and soft skills trainer by profession her interest in public speaking and leadership skills made her join toastmaster she is a double triple crown winner and double path breaker she is also the founder of imaginetic image consulting services welcome uh, toastmaster shri lakshmi over to you Uh, thank you toastmaster shristi for a brief lovely introduction of myself you know coming to table topic it's very important to practice uh, purpose of table is to practice impromptu speaking whenever we want to give elevator pitch or whenever whenever where we go for meeting someone asks us about what we do what we want what we want to do what we want to achieve in life within explain to if they give to explain one to two minutes we if you are very excellent in table topics we will be able to explain them in one to two in span of two one to two minutes though for table topic as p uh, timer always mentioned i will tell you once Uh, for uh, we should st- you should speak minimum for one minute. Um, one minute timer will show the green slide. One minute thirty seconds uh, yellow slide timer will show the and two minutes timer will show the uh, red slide. And you can speak maximum uh, two minute thirty seconds. After uh, if you speak more than two minute thirty seconds, you will be disqualified. And if you speak for less than one minute also, you will be disqualified. Hope everyone are ready, right? Toastmaster Siddharth, can you take first question? I think Toastmaster uh, TPM. Are you ready? I am ready. Oh, okay. What made you smile from the heart recently?
I will take this opportunity to talk first about the table topic and then build on the table topic. What made me smile recently, just now, the fact that I got a chance to give a table topic, to talk on a table topic. Now, let me tell you why. I need to keep my edge uh, shape, my razor's edge sharpened mentally, if you understand the parallel. I need to hone my uh, communication skills, is something I've felt for a long time. Now, I'm not able to take roles in table uh, Toastmasters because I'm so busy <laughs> orchestrating or semi orchestrating a lot of meetings. I just have to talk a lot. But I need to sharpen my edge. And being active in table topics and in Toastmasters is a great tool to great road to get there. So that being one of my major focuses and priorities in life, I feel like this just made me smile. Ekdam sorted. Pardon my French, but yeah, now I can think back to let me think earlier in the morning. What made me smile? I had to. I'm ill right now. I've got some ENT. My car, my ears are ringing, but I got an ENT infection. However, I had to go and play football today. I played as goalkeeper. While I've used it to build my stamina, and now I don't play as keeper. I had to go and play today, and that really made me smile. Why? Because I've got a fixed slot on a team, and I need to be there to ensure that. Equity and equality is maintained between the teams, at least in a simple 8v8. It's difficult to get people on a short notice. So you see, the fact that I have to do it, I have that kind of bonds with people, with a random group of folks who are, I'm the youngest person there. So being in that position made me smile. Now I look at the yellow color and I think that I've been talking, I'm just chilling, floating in the water right now, relaxing. And I've... Siddharth, we lost. We can't hear you. Siddharth, can you? I think there might be some internet connectivity issue at Toastmaster Siddharth's end. Uh, we can move on with the next uh, speaker, Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi, and continue when Toastmaster Siddharth is back. Okay, sure. Siddharth, we hope we recover soon. We'll come back to you so soon. Uh, Toastmaster Pavan, uh, or guest Pavan, guest Pavan, can you take next second question, please? Sure. Uh, can you share your unforgettable day of your life? <laughs> okay. So, unforgettable day is like, uh, uh, I was, uh, this day was in 2012. And uh, I was uh, in the uh, government sector for National Assembly Center working for that. And it was keep going on. Uh, I was married and uh, things were going good. And suddenly thought came and uh, that thought was like, should I pursue for the higher studies? And it was a very, uh, very like uh, tough decision because of that time I was not having a financially strong. I was completely dependent on my uh, family like father parents and my family is also dependent on me so it was a chained relation uh, but uh, this thought was going on from long time and I suddenly uh, told my father like uh, I wanted to quit from the job and I want to pursue for uh, master's and the day it uh, like I completely remember it was in the evening uh, eight o'clock and my father just, uh, he was like a, a very strict person and also he is very light on the side. So he just said, uh, okay, uh, he thought like he's just joking or he just put his thought. So he just agreed, okay, uh, whatever you want, you do it. And one thing is like, he never crossed my way. Like uh, cross my way means like he never, uh, uh, never declined any thought what I uh, told him, like any of the decision. He always, agreed with those decisions but he gave all the uh, pros and cons and if uh, even i go i want to pursue with that decision he always supported me and it was the night and then morning he was going for his job and i was sitting and i just say like uh, can you uh, give, because i know i have taken the late decision i didn't went through any of the uh, entrance examination it was like a not that planned uh, decision it was just a surprising decision so they agreed and the, and the time where like, 
um, i went for the decision to quit the job and pursue for mtech and when i got the degree of that mtech like uh, at the after two years it was like a happiest moment uh, for me and i never forget that moment particularly uh, yeah definitely yeah pawan definitely like in connect to if you achieve anything in education if you get after we get masters degree bachelor degree or certificate that is the happiest beautiful and unforgettable moment of your, of our life definitely i can connect with you very well correct correct prashna <clears throat> sir padu can you take uh, next question please yes yes can you share your uh, uh, who is your inspiration and why Right. Good morning, Gabby's. It is nice to meet you again in a very fine morning. Who is my inspiration? When to I mean honestly or frankly, I don't have just one person in my life to say that he is my inspiration or she is my inspiration. So, what I believe is something like you just observe everybody. Okay, there is no good or bad people in life. so you observe people most of them are actually good like no one is osama bin laden around us right so there are some sometimes that a people will handle a particular situation very diligently and some might not be able to handle it like it again uh, uh, some uh, wrong decisions they would take in their life so i would like to observe people see how someone handles something in a very nice way there are few strength and few weaknesses for everybody no one is perfect right so i would like to see people who just i could learn something this their strength okay how do they do this how do they do that and and i would like to see that and then i i like to take it into like i would like to embed or inculcate in me if it goes with my character or with it goes with my identity which i have for myself so yes so i would like to say that all of you are my inspiration right and i would i'll be like uh, happy to have get inspired like for example people are taking roles in this meetings you inspire me to come forward and speak and you know interact have a very nice uh, morning all those things so with that over to you shri lakshmi yeah paduka you are right every for everyone uh, has one uh, up good points and bad point positives and negatives it's definitely we should we can learn uh, no one single person we can take as inspiration we can take uh, everyone uh, as inspiration as around us we can learn from everyone around us yeah you are too you are correct so, yeah sorry vinamra can you take next question vinamra can you hear me yes 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 i can hear you What is your weakness? Biggest weakness? It's my biggest weakness. Should I repeat the question? No, no, I got it. So, everyone of you uh, might heard of SWOT analysis. Generally, this is done in companies. Like you know about the strength, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. but this i would like that we shouldn't restrict this concept to just companies we should apply this concept in our daily lives also now the question is that what is my weakness i wouldn't like to go initially just about my weakness because uh, as each one of us is blessed with so many different qualities and we should embrace those qualities and the, we should see what, what's good in us we should also like to see what what are the things that we can do differently than others we should appreciate ourselves and be our own motivator and inspiration i see a lot of good things in myself beyond this i wouldn't like to boast much you would be thinking the question is about weakness and why she is boasting because i am a motivational speaker and trainer so i hope you got that mm -hmm. uh talking about my weakness i think that uh, if someone uh, uh, talks to me very rudely the tone of voice isn't good i i couldn't connect to that person 
somehow i don't know because i have been brought up in such a manner in my family that we have a very different way of talking and talking to different people but if the tone of voice isn't is too harsh or too loud and if you don't have the proper talking ethics i i i just i i am actually out of the situation at that moment so this is one weakness i think that i can't control the other person's tone of voice or words what they are using but i realize that this one thing is there so i'm trying to overcome it and now i don't bother the way people talk or the kind of words they use because it's they who are doing it not me thank you thank you very well answer uh, it's not uh, them sir it's not uh, it's not affecting us we should take care of ourselves whatever opposite person speak it doesn't bother shouldn't that much bother us what opposite person say or what we should take care of our uh, how, how we manage how we handle how they speak opposite person that is the important yes dtm sir i have one question for you can you take this dtm sir Ditim Soro, can you hear me? Ditim Soro. I think Toastmaster Soro might be away. In the meantime, we have Toastmaster Preeti. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Anish? Anish, can you take... Yes, yes, I can. Uh, what is the one thing missing in your life? One thing uh, missing in my life. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say many things. Uh, it's not just one thing. I feel like I uh, wanted to do uh, or I want to do a lot of things in life. And, uh, uh, you know, I am kind of trying my hard uh, i in fact i you know this new year i made a few new year resolutions and i'm trying my best to stick to it i you know i'm working from home so i made a list of all my goals to achieve this year and i've sticked it on the wall right where i'm working so i can keep looking at it uh, every time uh, the last 10 years you know once i completed my college i started working I've uh, become a little bit of a serious person. I used to have, you know, I had a very good humor sense. I used to have a lot of uh, fun uh, with friends. Uh, but over the years, uh, you know, with the work stress and everything, uh, I myself, I, I mean, I don't try to crack jokes nowadays. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's uh, one thing I currently, I am trying to, uh, improve myself apart from my professional goals and you know the toastmasters journey i'm just four months old in toastmasters uh, so i try and try to spend more time with my family uh, whenever i get free time i talk to my relatives i talk to my wife um, i try to crack jokes i'm trying to get back to my uh, you know old myself uh, where i had that Josh and myself when I was in college or when I just started working. Um, that's it. Over to you, Toastmaster of the uh, Table Topics Master. Thank you, Toastmaster. Anish, a little bit of joke humor in our life is very important. It's good you bought that uh, new old Anish back. <laughs> Toastmaster, are you, can you take next question? Yes. Do you believe there is a superhero is within everyone? do i believe there is a superhero in everyone yeah superhero as the name suggests people will come up with those lines that a uh, lot of uh, what is what is that saying big power comes with big responsibilities something like that mm. but a uh, superhero for me is a lady uh, I, I would just take one instance so it was early morning, 5 a.m. when I was living in Vaijag. Uh, I was 
very determined at that point of time to visit gym and i would get out and go home and when i return i always see a woman with two kids in the front of her scooty with the bags at the back and she would go to school to drop them come back and they were like kind of neighbors and the same lady starts goes her office by 10 comes back in the evening and that is how the life is like she has to do household chores but when i looked at her the kind of effort she is putting for the family trying to take everything together putting them school bringing them back going to office walking doing all of the things which is necessary this makes them something more than superhero uh, in, we often do not realize the kind of effort a housewife or a women makes why because it's in your home and when something is at very easily available to you you don't realize its importance but for me that has been something which inspired me a lot i lived alone but when I, whenever i see her in the morning going i was like wow this this women is amazing and all the women in the world they are doing almost everything to bring the family together to do everything possible to unite everybody and my mother itself is a great example she dedicated her whole life for us to study for us to get into better position move into different cities uh, that is the best thing i think like what else you need from a person who is ready to dedicate her whole life for somebody so for me that has been a best experience and i feel that for me if i find if i have to find a super woman i just look at the next door women or somebody who is really putting all their effort for the family that's my take on the topic over to you thank you toastmaster aki toastmaster shri lakshmi we can take two more considering uh, time okay, so okay. we have toastmaster chaitanya and i know toastmaster preeti has been raising her okay. hand for quite some time okay sure I, sure let's see later lowered her hand i think we don't want her to feel that no, not equitable no she's in the line only she i am thinking of uh, calling her next preeti can you take next question please Pretty. Thank you very much. I just wanted to tell you that lots of renovation happening all around me as if I'm sitting in a construction site. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> I can't help it. Okay. Can I take next? This question is for you. Very. Uh, have you ever experienced deja vu moment? Yes. The Toastmaster fraternity gave me many, many such opportunities where I just felt that deja vu moments. and you know i never ever trusted myself I, i was suffering from one very peculiar disease not so uncommon but very common for me and it was imposter syndrome i always doubted my capabilities my capacity especially as a speaker public speaker english is not my native language i born and brought up in hindi medium studied in hindi medium i think in hindi i speak hindi as a mother tongue and then i translate it into english while talking to people and there came toastmasters which gave me so much opportunities to talk in table topics and the best moment came last year because last year international speech contest i never ever dreamt in my life first that i'll participate forget about winning and second that i can also win oh my god but thanks to my mentor at that time so dtm sort of that he pushed me hard and he said trust yourself and there i was standing on the podium taking my first ever public speaking contest and when my name was announced as a second winner that was my moment of deja vu not only because i won that speech contest but because i won over my self doubt that gave me a seed to believe myself believe in my thought process believe in my mentor believe on this platform 
and that gave me the belief that I am in the right place, where lots of learning, where a lot of equanimity. Nobody is there to judge you. I was under lots of ifs and doubts, what's about myself, but trust me, this is the safest place. These are my people. And what else can be better than this place to keep giving you such moments every now and then? My dear friends, stick to this platform, stick with the Gabbies, and you'll definitely get lots of deja vu moments over to your tabletop with master. Definitely, Preeti. Deja vu Gabbies gave deja vu moment to many people like us, you, me, many people. Definitely, I agree with you. Toastmaster. Chaitanya Prasad, can you take next question, please? Yes, I can. Okay. Can you share your beautiful memories with your pets? Mem mo memories with my pets? Mm -hmm. Okay. So first, I would like to thank you, uh, Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi, for giving me this opportunity. Now, I never had a pet actually. So <laughs> I don't really have memories, but I am really attached to animals. And I had been uh, living in places where... There were a lot of wild animals too. Like we could see leopards in the park, in the children park, or many a times the elephant would uh, demolish the house which was beside us, just one wall to have their jackfruits. So, uh, <clears throat> but uh, with animals, I, I do uh, admire cats a lot because we don't have to take care of them. They, they'll take care of themselves. Uh, they'll stay around us and they'll keep us pr protected as well. And that's why I admire all the kinds of cat, uh, animals which are in that cat family. Uh, even tigers and lions, though it, they are carnivores and I cannot go near them. But if I had a chance, I would love to uh, pet them maybe or try to live among them just to understand the way they manage their herd and uh, live. Because you might have seen in National Geography channel or Discovery channels that uh, and e even when they are not hungry, they don't attack on other animals. Only when they want to have some, uh, they are hungry, they attack on other animals uh, or prey upon them. So that makes them quite smart. They are not hurting anyone uh, without any uh, reasons, Okay, which, which is quite an excellent mindset, which even us humans should uh <clears throat> take uh okay uh yeah so that's all from my side thank you yeah. Lakshmi. thank you toastmaster Chaitan. i can connect with you very well as you told cats uh, cats you need to you don't need to take care of them definitely i i adopted cats as uh, kittens but i became mother to them i i don't want to say them as my pets i want them to know as my sons that kind of attachment i have with my cats <laughs> Pranav, can you take next question? Pranav? Yeah. Can you take next question? Um, yeah, I joined a little late. I would like to know, like, um, uh, Pranav, uh, what how, how, how right long do I have to speak? One minute, many, minimum one minute, maximum two minutes, 30 seconds. Minimum one minute, you should speak. Okay, fine. Huh? Yeah, sure, sure. I can. Okay. Can you share your unforgettable memories with your parents? Um, associated memories with my parents. Hmm. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Please, we can hear you. Um, okay. Associated memories with my parents, right? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I would like to share one of my the memories which I had some time ago with my parents when I went uh, for a trip with them. Actually, uh, working in Bangalore, it is only on rare occasions that I get to go to my hometown. So like uh, this new year, I actually planned a visit with them to a hill station. And when I went there, uh, usually when I am in, in the house, I get to spend only very little time with my parents. But uh, when I went there, I went there for around two days and I could actually spend a lot of uh, time sharing my experiences with them and actually enjoying the scenery. And uh, there, from there, uh, we actually went to 
lot of nearby places which were very uh, good to visit like i visited uh, a place where there was a good water for water uh, waterfall which was flowing and um, after that we had a very good time um, taking lot of pictures in the, uh, in the scenic beauty and um, like uh, the that time uh, it was actually two hour journey from my house and after that um, when i was driving i could actually share lot of my uh, lot of a lot of things with them which i couldn't actually when i used to go home regularly and um, after that like three days i spent with them and we had a very good time walking in the uh, walking and enjoying the scenery but um, after that after three days when uh, we returned but uh, when after coming back i felt really bad that uh, the thing uh, like it ended in three days the three days went like actually some three or four hours and i feel that i would like to enjoy more the trip with them so <laughs> thank you very well answered post prano if you go for yeah. with your parents if you go for 10 days it feel like 10 hours if you go for yeah yeah definitely like i can resonate with you thank you very much prano coming for yeah. answering if anyone wants to volunteer for last question we are out of time shri lakshmi okay so, okay sir so, i'll hand over to, to, to we are thank you everyone for coming forward and actively participating in ktm i want to thank everyone everyone answered very well everyone answered from the heart With this, I want to hand over stage to Toastmaster of the day, Sishti. Over to you, Sishti. Thank you, Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi, for that amazing session. Uh, now, now I would like to hand it over to our general evaluator, Toastmaster Chitrakshi, and uh, I would also request Toastmaster Chitrakshi to conduct the evaluations for speaker one. I think we skipped that part in the start. Uh, and in the meantime, I would request Toastmaster Nancy to please launch the poll for the best table topic speaker. Yeah, thank you, Nancy. Over to you, G. Chitrakshi. Let's give everyone just to one a minute or so to fill in the. Okay. Are we good? Are, are the polls in? Has everyone filled in? Okay, perfect. uh thank you tmod now we let's start with the evaluation first which we had skipped so evaluation one eval paduka over to you if doors of opportunity is closed knock a window whether ttm whether our tm said has managed to open one good morning gabies so Toastmaster Syed, since this is your level four speech, I'm going to be a little bit critical in my feedback for today, right? So first thing is what you did well, according to me, is the first is the content itself. The script is wonderful. Simple use of language. You used a very crisp words to explain, describe a scene. The characterization was good. So I was able to imagine or visualize or the 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 scene that you are iterating as such. so and and also the way you take up the question as well the, the the questions as well all the answers you were able to connect with a story or a fact so i must really congratulate or i must i must say i'm a little bit envious with your presence of mind as well in that now coming to how what left me perplex is your title itself the choice of title you said knock a window if you're not able to open the door but how are you your message conveyed confront the truth truth right it's like break the door or something of that sort so i'm not even able to just relate with that but rest all the story is quite fine and one more thing which i would like to add also you had a lot of twists and turns as well you know right uh, you became a hero at the end moment and all those things you could add a little bit of masala to it as well like uh, out of the blue or you know if you if you think about something like the, the it works the miracles happen you could add such kind of uh, sentences that would add a little bit more of interest in your script and coming to your delivery style i love the way uh, the, your cool and calm composed nature 
that's well done but however i would like to have you have a little bit of an energy uh, a bit of a voice modulation as well you know you're you're iterating a story so you could the, the pauses or or uh, you know, uh, you you could you could do a little bit of uh, uh, you could work a little bit on that particular part as such. So when you say, I mean, you got a villain role, like you could say something like, "I chose for a villain," some something like that. I don't want to be too dramatic. I know some people tend to be too dramatic. I don't I don't want you to overdo, but a little bit will make things interesting, right? And apart from that, right? So I covered the most yeah. All right, so to summarize what I must say is that uh, having said all these things, you did manage to keep the audience hooked for 15 to 20 minutes. No, I that is that is literally a Hercules task given the kind of attention span that the world have today. And I must also uh, like to congratulate or I must also say, Gabby, you did a good job. I mean, this kind of topic or the story, the personal experience it was iterating. I was like, I was a little bit blank. What kind of questions I can ask him? But you did brought a different perspective and you did ask beautiful questions, I must say. So that is my learning for today. So with this, with a little bit of improvement, Toastmaster Syed, in your delivery style, I'm sure you can do wonders in public speaking. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now it's time for evaluating the evaluator. So the evaluator's evaluator, DTM Solve Data, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, G. So Paduka, when we are evaluating a particular speaker, first and foremost, what we need to look at is what is the objective of making the speech. It can be an awesome speech. It can move me, it can impress me, I can roll over the floor laughing, but the biggest question is, what was the objective? Why was that person taking the stage? And why was Toastmaster Sayyad Bade Sahib taking the stage today? He was taking the stage for conducting a Q&A session. So my first question is, was the speech good enough or appropriate for people to ask questions, right? Because if you remember, just after the speech got over, there was almost a minute of, or more than a minute of uncanny silence when no one was asking any questions. And he had to push and then he had to say, okay, I will call someone and ask them questions. Is that the right way of doing it? If I don't have a question, are you going to put a gun on my head and say, Hey, Saurav, you have to ask a question. How dare you don't ask a question? You are in this meeting. Come on. That was the approach we were taking. Now, I decided to ask a question. I came forward and asked a question, uh, being proactive. Do you expect the same thing to happen in real life? Where we have an informative session, there are many trainers here. I can already see Chitrakshi nodding her head. As a trainer, it's such a common experience. You do a eight hours training and six hours training. And after that, you ask people, do you have any questions? And everyone gives a blank look and you're like, okay, did you get me or did you totally not get me? So when you're sharing information, people are not asking questions. And here we are sharing an experience, a story, and we are expecting people to ask questions. That is what my biggest feedback would be if I were the evaluator for Toastmaster Sayyid Barisa. The speech was fantastic. There was a wonderful story. Yes, he managed to keep us engaged. So all of those points that you mentioned were pertinent. But was that his project objective? Was he here to keep us engaged for 15 minutes? No. He was here to get us inquisitive. Now, what do I get inquisitive on? Do I get inquisitive about why his dad did do like that? What kind of drama or play did he do? What difference does it make to my life? His dad is not my dad, right? So how will I be interested in that? So 
when we are evaluating a speaker, always pay attention to the objective of the speech, of the project. The delivery, the content is all secondary if the objective of the speech is not met. And in this particular case, I feel that a different speech would have probably done justice to this particular project than the speech that was selected. Thank you. Back to you, Madam General. Thank you so much. Before I give my evaluation, I would like to call my team back. So our team of Mission Impossibles. Let's, uh, yes. We yes. Have to launch the the polls for the evaluators. Uh, I'll just launch the poll uh, before you. Yes, please. Are we good? Oh, perfect. So let me call back my team. First of all, the timer. Timer Neha Jain, could you please present your report? Neha, are you there? Yes, Chitrakshi, I'm here. And this is the timer report for today. I'll just put it on the chat. Everyone was within the time limit. I'll put the timings on the chat. Thank you. Let's see. Let me call the our counter next. Our counter, Kartik. Uh, thank you, General Evaluator Chitrakshi. So let me share my uh, screen to show the our counter report. Okay. Uh, Zoom Master, can you please uh, give me the screen sharing rights? You have it now. Yeah, thank you. So as you can see, yeah, so this is the our counter report and you can see the usage of crutch words used by speakers, the filler words and the repetitive words <laughs> here uh, and also long, long and short pauses. So I would request uh, to be mindful, use, mindful, of, mindful of these uh, usage of crutch words, filler words and long and short pauses in your next speech so that you can make your uh, speech effective. And kudos to all those who have not used much of these words. Uh, and yeah, back to you, General Levitt. Thank you, our counter. Next, the Grammarian report. Grammarian Shilpa Reddy. Shilpa, you're on mute. Thank you, Chitrakshi. Before I give you all the details, um, the aim of International Women's Day 2023, Embrace Equity, can I request you all to hug yourself? Yes, we missed that part. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all. So uh, thank you, Chitrakshi, Srishti, and Syed for using the word of the day, equanimity. Um, and a few of them used the word as equanimous, which is good. And um, some beautiful words that I've heard from everyone who spoke today are synonymous, equitable, adequate, deviation, vague, elevated, diligent, embrace, carnivorous. These are just normal words, but then just to remind ourselves about these words, that they exist. And some special words that have been used today are disparity, equitable, rebellious, inculcate, peculiar, iterating, pertinent, and inquisitive. So a thought shared by TMOD Srishti is that equity not in terms of gender, I can't hear. I, I thought it was just me. Uh, Shilpa, you're not audible. Shilpa? Yo, you're muted. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Shilpa.
No. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So where did you guys lose me? Gender. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Saro. Uh, wrong place to stop my <laughs> words. So. We again lost you, Toastmaster Shilpa. How about now? Yeah. Yes. Wow. So I have a backup. Thank God. I didn't trust my earpods. TMOD Sristi said equality not in terms of gender, but equity as for the caliber and efforts for employees, which got stuck in my mind. And I had to repeat it three times. You'll never forget that. So Syed mentioned a couple of points in his speech. One is about drama. Drama is all about emotion, excitement, struggle, and applause. And he also mentioned that it is not about the actions, but the results which should speak. We all know, but just a reminder to everyone. Arkib from the table topics session spoke that big power comes from big responsibility. Thank you, Arkib. That's a beautiful saying. And evaluation Paduka said, if doors of opportunities are closed, knock a window. Thank you, Paduka. Improper grammatical usage, we have um, listed about uh, 10 to 15 words where we uh, could have improved or could have used uh, proper grammatical words. One is taking up, it's taken up. One of my teacher, it, it, you have to use one of my teachers, catch up my studies, it's catch up with. And when I wake up, when I woke up, I come back, it's I came back. So mostly about present and past tense. I was keep going on, you have to say it went on. I went for the decision. I took the decision. I couldn't connect. I cannot connect. Ta talking ethics. You could have used communication etiquette instead of talking ethics. Sticked. Someone said sticked in the table topics. It is stuck. All of the things which is necessary, which are necessary. Why? Because. Why? Because. Because is a term used to answer a question why. So it is just because, not why because. My mother itself, my mother herself, I am born, it is I was born. And to improve, someone said a very little time in the table topic session, you could have used, I barely had time to spend time with my parents or I hardly spend time with my parents. That's my, that's my um, output. Thank you so much. And back to you, Chitrakshi. And sorry for the time technical glitch. <clears throat> Not a problem. We now know gender equity better. With that, we go back to the listener who's been listening intently and who's going to test our listening. Listener Ankit Yagi, over to you. Uh, thanks, Ch Ch Chitrakshi. So let's see who was listening and not he only hearing. So what does imposter syndrome mean? Self-doubt. It is when you are sitting on the table and you feel you are not worthy enough to sit on the table. You start doubting your own capabilities. Yes, great. And who who was suffering from imposter syndrome? Preeti John. Great. And uh, fairness is better than equity or equally important. Who said this? Toastmaster Akib. Yes, great. And what is the happiest moment of Toastmaster Pawan Kumar? Getting the opportunity to speak. The first thing he shared was like getting the opportunity to, to speak on the table topic. Completing his MTech, getting his MTech degree. Yes, that's the right answer. And as per uh, Toastmaster Sayyid, what percentage of people are persistent till end and accomplish their goals? Uh, 
I think it's five or six percent. One percent. One percent. One percent is the right answer. And uh, who was titled as Night Ow Owl during the introduction of role takers? Grammarian. Shilpa. Shilpa. Yes. Grammarian. So everybody so attentive during this session. <laughs> Last question is who said not everybody is Osama bin Laden? Toastmaster Paduka. Paduka. Yes. So that's it from my side. Over to you, uh, Chitrakshi. Thank you. Uh, the PO, do you want to say something? I thought, no, okay. Now with, I would like to present my evaluation. And for today's evaluation, I want to congratulate everyone on starting the meeting on time. We are right on time, so we did that well. Uh, the meeting opened by the essay with all energy. The PO did very well while, while introducing the guests, getting everyone on board. My tag team, I'm very proud of my tag team because I couldn't have asked for a better team. I know that for sure. This was one of the best teams I could have had. They managed all my work very easily. And my favorite part was that there was an evaluator for the evaluator. Hence, the GE was just chilling throughout the meeting. And if there is anything that was really left to say, it wasn't mine to say. Because there was an evaluation, evaluator for an evaluator. And GE was just sitting and saying, yeah, I think I'm the best leader possible. I've managed and delegated all my work very nicely. So with that, I manage my equity. However, I have a mentor. So she keeps reminding me when I forget things. And two things that we did not do very well. Uh, two things that I, we haven't covered. Two people we didn't do, uh, we didn't cover were the TMOD and the Table Topics Master. Mm -hmm. The TMOD kept everyone highly engaged, kept everyone in, engrossed. And it was quite an important topic for all of us. This is something that uh, since Gabby's is again a group of image consultants, we have this going on everywhere and now here and every. So for me, for the last one week, every group that I open, I've only been watching equity, embrace equity, embrace equity. To a point that now I know what equity is and I stand for it. I hope everyone at Gabby's stands for it equally now. Uh, equally. With equal equity. Okay. With that, the TMOD did a really good job. Did everything on time. Uh, I think the question and answers getting everyone involved was really good. One thing that uh, the TMOD could have done for next time that you can keep in mind is when we were going out of time, Sri Lakshmi was uh, exceeding the time, you could have spoken to the timer, intervened in, interjected in between and just asked the timer if we were going on time, which of course someone did, but you could have done that as the TMOD. That's keeping time is also your responsibility for the meeting. Uh, that is one. Table topics master, Sri Lakshmi. What topics? And I just missed the whole thing. I just waited to get somewhere, something somewhere out of it. So I, I thought I it might intervene, but um, it was too good for me to say anything. I was enjoying all the table topics, of course, for sure. Uh, again, for you, the same thing that I said to the TMOD, maybe before come, if when you know you have last two or three left, this is what we see in across meetings, when you know there are two, three left, just check with the timer or the TMOD to make sure that we are still within time because table topics is one section where we tend to exceed our time. So just keeping track of that and coming back would be great. Uh, having said that, I think uh, one more person, uh, I have to evaluate the evaluators evaluator and um, as always I think he, he was very good with his evaluation very very serious very serious and he covered all the points in fact what I was thinking during the evaluation is what he said that okay I remember when it was my project and it was managing the audience I had seen that project somewhere else where I had gone as an evaluator and this time it was an offline um, a session that was happening and managing the audience was very simple because everyone was just sitting watching the speaker speak the speaker went on with their theory I didn't get make any it didn't make any sense to me but I was watching and I was listening I thought wow this is very convenient this is how you do projects I'm going to do my project like that and then I realized that it was my time to manage a difficult audience 
and the audience came from gabbies i did it at another club get the audience came from gabbies and that's the most difficult audience i have actually managed my, in my entire life and my evaluator was those master sorry tata so with that i and the second i realized that um, this was question answers and how oh, those master sayed he got away so easily really why is it just me is it just me why is it me god and then came the evaluators evaluate and i was like thank god there is equity there is equity <laughs> things don't change like that so thank you to dtm solve that that this is really good your evaluation was very apt and that's something i would have recommended as well and uh, maybe you know if you said it in a little uh, with a little bit of a smile and not scared all of us and not scared the evaluator because i looked at her face and she was that evaluation i give it was that bad i'm so sorry i'm taking my word back can i take back time but that is what i'm going to do not knock doors beat on doors and beat everyone out so that's what she was doing throughout and you were all pinned so it was so much fun to watch um having said that i think the meeting went really well and i will not exceed time with that i would like to hand it over to the tmod of the day srishti over to you thank you ji for that lovely evaluation and keeping us all engaged and being equitable by covering everyone not missing out anyone so thank you for that i would request toastmaster nancy to la launch the polls for the auxiliary role takers and in the meantime i know i had kept toastmaster pawan waiting for a very long time so i would request toastmaster pawan to share his take on equity and whatever and what equity means for him Toastmaster Pawan, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. So first of all, uh, thanks to all and the first Toastmaster who provided me the opportunity. And uh, this is my first session. I will take a minute to just like say uh, what was my today's experience. I heard uh, about the Toastmasters when I was in IBM. From there, I started getting this word Toastmaster and Toastmaster. And that in IBM, it was a heavy practice. People were using uh, Toastmaster clubs. so when i moved here and i was uh, lacking some skills uh, presentation skills and all those so those words keep reminding me every day like should i try the toastmaster one more time uh, because i i heard in ibm but i never experienced and uh, then me and nitesh was talking about and nitesh got the opportunity in the past uh, previous session and this session he invited me and i was first when i was uh, i joined today morning i was Uh, today i am not feeling well actually from last three three days and i thought like i will only join for a uh, half an hour and one hour i can ask for excuse but the session was too uh, engaging and too interesting i couldn't uh, get a guts to type a message where i can say like i will leave i am not able to uh, sit but uh, really i uh, how this two uh, hours uh, flew i i don't know and everything was uh, a, like every session every word or everyone was who is representing it was purely engaged uh, session so thanks uh, thanks to n and my two hours was completely worthy here and now the topic equity and the equal uh, equalization so for me like when we say equal uh, equity should be like paid off based on the like Uh, it should not be based on the gender uh, like uh, it should be equal when uh, it doesn't matter like you know, on the based on gender but when i was hearing like equity when uh, in the workplace equal uh, showcase uh, the uh, what you are getting as a like ctc or what so as a human most of the time what we say like we always uh, eager to know uh, what he is getting what i am getting but as soon as we know like uh, the less of us take, uh, take example of x person is getting x amount and i am getting minus x amount and we never we never thought like i he might be good in some part right as a human i always think i am the great i am only doing the great thing in the project and i should get the more so that time what happens like those and this personal experience happened with me also uh, where like uh, team conflict 
uh, when you say okay you do work and you if you know like uh, this person getting more than me then i will directly say why should i do that this person is not doing you assign it to that so sometime like uh, managing these things are a, a bit complicated uh, somewhere you can't maintain equality uh, on based on the equity as well uh, because someone has paid their hard work in the beginning uh, let's suppose if a person who came from the iit he has paid their days hard uh, in early enough and if i am as a like uh, coming from the uh, normal uh, college and i'm definitely there is a gaps are there so if you will compare that person iit and iim and is getting a one year package and i am getting only 10 lakh rupees package so then how you will make the equality so situation based uh, this things come and definitely it should not be biased i would say like uh, things should not be biased one uh, then it will make the fair sense i don't Thank know you, i master okay but yeah sure please Carry. yeah i was just saying like i i don't know like i debated the topic but this is my personal experience and thought came in my mind so. yeah. thanks for sharing that toastmaster pavan and really happy that we could keep you engaged for two hours that you did not even feel like dropping in between so glad we could do that so uh, with this i would like to hand it over to the po but just few closing comments from my side so we did discuss a lot on equity equality what it all means and i was really happy that everyone was so engaged sharing their point of view on equity but the main message why i wanted to keep this theme to for today of course it's in line with the international women's day theme but the main idea behind this is we need equity because equity is having achieving equity will it is at the core of many global issues which exist around us be it race gender sexual uh, gender discrimination disabilities education everything and once we are more equitable from our end we can achieve a world which is more equal overall so we all should strive for being more equitable and this will ultimately lead to a more equal world so with this i would like to hand it back to toastmaster our presiding officer dtm saurabh dutt thank you so much That's... sorry about that so before i uh, share the poll results uh, let me uh, play the uh, the po part so gabby started with uh, two men and uh, 21 women after some time no points were guessing who was one of those two men uh, if you're guessing who was the other man <laughs> he is not with the gabby is anymore uh, after that uh, that gentleman left and uh, it was uh, one man and uh, 22 women and that kind of continued for a very long time i remember there were male toastmasters and guests who would join the meeting and think it's a women's only club and leave uh, and uh, in fact someone had pinged me once saying that uh, hey i saw you at a women's only club the other day so uh, do they only allow some people <laughs> i said uh, that's not a women's only club that's my club so i see only women there i said yeah that's how we all got started off and then slowly we had uh, you know things uh, moving and then we had more people joining in fact uh, in the at the gabbies we don't celebrate women's day uh, the reason being that uh, i said that there was another man right and one of the reason that he uh, was disappointed with us is that we did not celebrate man men's day and uh, you know what do you expect in a club of 22 women and one man who remembers men's day right so <laughs> he was very upset with it and he said that you know how did you forget men's day so i had to do some kind of a cover up so i said okay we will not celebrate any day only birthdays <laughs> so that's what explains that we are not celebrating women's day since we are not celebrating women's day what's the closest that we can get we can do all meeting themes this month around women <laughs> that was never a mandate but that's what is emerging the open house all the open houses the club meetings so yes as chitakti said 
this month is all about embracing equity. And if, if we would have got $1 for every time we heard equity in the last two weeks, we could have had our own stocks and equities, right? Our portfolios, SIPs, and all would be swelling. So anyways, uh, that's wishful thinking. A great job, everyone. Thank you with the wonderful meeting. I really loved it. I uh, heard some of the guests say that they loved the meeting. Uh, people who couldn't, um, you know, um, share their feedback and want to share your feedback, like Vinamra, if you have anything to share, how did you like the meeting? Varun, if you would, in a quick 30 seconds, all yours. Vinamra, Varun, what did you feel about the meeting today? The meeting was good. I would like to connect after the meeting that how can I become a member of this club? Sure, Vinamra. You dropped me. Uh, incidentally, I am the, you know, you made my day. Thank you. Uh, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> you made my day because I am the VP membership of the club. So yeah, okay. you're talking to the right person and uh, you can send me a PM uh, or just put your number uh, on the WhatsApp group or one of our officers will ping you now. Uh, Nancy. Okay. You know, but do share the number back with me. Okay? Sure. So, um, with this, uh, can we have Varun also? Varun, can do you have anything to share in terms of the meeting? How did it go? What did you feel? Any feedback for us? Hello, Saurabh. Hi. I don't have any kind of feedback as such. Sorry, I didn't get you. I don't have any kind of feedback because this meeting was absolutely perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Varun. Okay, so let me now not waste any more time and announce the results. So let us start with the, in my usual style, the best table topic speaker. Any guesses, Paduka? Any guesses, Paduka? I didn't announce the result. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one thing I'll always do is I vote for myself. So I was one of the speakers, so I'll do that. So that one did not work this time, whatever I do. Uh, <laughs> so best, <laughs> the best speaker, the best table topic speaker for today is Toastmaster Preeti Jain. Congratulations, Toastmaster Preeti. The next is the best auxiliary role taker. At the cabbies, we love the grammarians, you know, even if uh, they're intermittently audible, they're still the best tackle role taker. <laughs> so congratulations. When it comes to the best tackle team boards, we had, we don't impress equity. <laughs> so congratulations Toastmaster Shilpa Reddy uh, for uh, having a very impactful grammarian report, despite all the audio glitches you had. It's a, it's a struggle sometimes, but I think still, this online mode works very well for all of us because that's what connects all of us right across the country. Moving on to the next category, the speech evaluators. Okay, that's me. Thank you. Uh, and moving on to the best uh, role taker. Any guesses? General evaluator? Or the... G, I think. Okay, so that's Ake voting for you, Chitrakshi. Was that good enough? No. Because it's Toastmaster Shristik area and she did not embrace equity this time. She was, she got a lots and lots of votes where people loved her for choosing the theme of the day and the way she conducted the meeting. Thank you, Chitrakshi. Thank you, Shilakshmi. Uh, thank you, all the role, all the Tiger team players. Neha, uh, I always say the, the timer role is like the AC in the room. As long as it's working, no one pays attention. The moment it stops working, you go helter skelter, right? Our counters, I, I really, I don't, I, I can't say good words about the counter because it's always my horror story. Um, I, I didn't, I, I couldn't pay attention to your chart, but I, I think it's, it's no guess that I'm there somewhere at the top. Uh, the listener, again, a great job. Uh, Ankit, uh, you are taking up uh, some, uh, some uh, you know, you're, you're taking up some roles uh, now. And um, being a new Toastmaster, I really appreciate the, uh, the way you are playing these new roles. So thank you, everyone. And with this, I would uh, adjourn the meeting number 123 of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club. Please join us next week uh, on 11th of uh, March again at same time, 10 a.m. 
post that on 18th of March, we have got the 125th meeting coming up, the big one, a hybrid meeting, where we will have an online and an offline both, and uh, more details on that coming your way. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. Hello, guys. Giving you back. Bye.